what we want to talk to you about this afternoon is the truth about healthcare data. So many of you, I'm sure, are working with life science data or with healthcare data. And for some of those sources, it's quite OK, right? So EHR data now, generally, is coming to us in a, well, it's not quite a modern format, is it HL7 version 2? But we've got Fire. We've got HL7 version 3. We have, uh, somebody told me yesterday, it's now 40 years old, the X12 uh, claims format standard. And that's OK. We know how to deal with that. We now, in Google Cloud, have a healthcare API that's in beta that can bring in data in HL7 version 2 and Fire in its native formats. Imaging data, medical imaging data, typically comes in in DICOM format. Uh, or pathology uh, systems often have a, a slightly different format as well. But again, we recognize those. We know those pretty well. And we also have DICOM support within our healthcare API too. Genomics data. In healthcare and life sciences, we, bring in, we think about bringing all of these different types of data, different modalities of data together. And typically, we look for different variants, and so we bring in those variant data uh, in VCF files directly into BigQuery, um, and that all works too. We have an API for that. That's fantastic. We've got a couple of emerging types of data that we're seeing more and more commonly, and that I know you guys are starting to think about how you're going to use that data. You know you want to use that data, but the challenge with that is that there's no common standards yet for that kind of data. And so that's something that we're watching the space will work to do these kinds of tools that we need to ingest it over time. The one that's sort of missing here is that text data, that unstructured notes, uh, unstructured clinical notes, the notes that physicians write uh, as they're documenting either your progress within an acute uh, stay or discharge notes and so on. And we see that come through in lots of different formats. Uh, sometimes we th see it coming through the wire on top of a PDF interface. Um, and then we need to think about how you're going to OCR that, how you're going to understand what's really in that content. So the way that I like to think about these different data sets is sort of from top to bottom. These are small to large types of data sets. Um, with genomics as absolutely enormous, somewhere in the middle. But uh, in terms of messiness, I think EHR data, and particularly clinical notes data, is some of the messiest. It's some of the hardest to extract real value from when you're trying to integrate multiple sources of that together. So let's talk a little bit about those clinical notes. Here's a sample of a note from a patient who was in the ICU. Notes are dense, right? There's a lot of data up there in that note. And in addition, there are many, many abbreviations. And actually, often, some of the abbreviations are in Latin as well. And so it's not really obvious around how you go about extracting the clinical meaning. And yet, there's clearly a lot of clinical meaning in this note. In addition, <laughs> because of the lovely vagaries of our different EMR systems, never mind the unwillingness of our physicians to learn to type well, uh, we have all sorts of punctuation issues, right? There are spaces that are missing. There are, in some cases, very structured approaches to using a semicolon versus a comma. Um, but each one is different, and each note uh, from each different institution often has a very different format. They're long. <laughs> this is an ICU uh, note. Uh, no, I think this is a neurology note. Um, they're very long uh, in many cases, and so that's a lot of information to plow through. Um, sometimes <laughs> they're not unstructured. They contain structure. They contain tabular data. And that can be hard for an NLP system, a natural language processing system, to really understand 
especially when the raw data for this table didn't look like this. What it looked like was more of a bespoke structure like that. And what's interesting about this, so it's probably a bit hard to see from down there, but the name, this is some lab data, and the names of the labs are actually highlighted in red here. The challenge with this is that you'll notice that there are lots of gaps in the table because the data wasn't fully uh, dense for every single time period. There wasn't a lab at every single time period. And so sometimes you have to interpolate on which piece of data belongs to which time period. That sort of semi-structured data can be really difficult. And when we think about semi-structured data, it's not just tabular data like this and other labs. It also includes things like understanding note sections, where you might have, uh, for example, in a SOAP note, a subjective, an objective, uh, an assessment, and a plan. You might have different types of note headers that give you some metadata about that note. But that, too, needs its own special kind of parsing. Or you might also have many different notes. You often have many different notes for a particular encounter. And you know, the most common example of this is within the ICU, where patients stay for typically a longer period of time. The other challenge that's increased as we think about uh, electronic medical records is that notes are often copied forward. And this has definitely been exacerbated with the increase in EMR usage, not least because the meaningful use uh, regulations that were so compelling in terms of EMR adoption, because they initially waived the carrot of some money and then waived a stick of taking money away, forced the adoption of an EMR system, but that EMR system needed to be updated with different regulatory content every two years. And so the EMR vendors really struggled to keep up. And so what went by the wayside was usability. And so physicians got fed up, got burned out. And the EMRs introduced ways to accelerate for them the entry of that clinical findings, the entry of those clinical notes. Uh, and one of the ways they did that was with copy forward or copy and paste from one note to another. Uh, this is from a paper uh, two years ago. Um, and the paper was done based on data at UC, uh, University of California San Francisco Medical Center. Um, it used EPIC, but we see the same problems in every single EMR. I don't want to pick on EPIC here. In a typical note, oh, and I'm sorry, there's a weird space there that should be a comma. We analyzed 23,630 notes written by almost 500 clinicians and found that in a typical note, almost 50% of that note was copied. Another 36% was imported, and only 18% of the text was manually entered. Right? That's a huge amount, particularly of the copied, copied forward, copied from other places. And the graph here shows uh, the prevalence of progress notes by the amount of manually entered text. Right, So relatively little fully manually entered text, a huge amount with very little manually entered text. So this is a problem. It's a problem to try and understand, to pull out the richness of the information that's buried there in that clinical note. Because the clinical note is supposed to be the repository of the physician's thinking process, decision-making process, the evidence that they found, how they did the differential diagnosis, and what the treatment plan is for the patient. And that decision-making process isn't really captured anywhere else. So it's really important to be able to mine the wealth of this information that's buried in the data of the clinical note. So what are we doing about it? And when you think about ingesting healthcare and life science data, how do you think about 
getting that data, getting the information out of that data, aligned into a single environment for you to use as the basis of analysis or machine learning. Well, when we think about it, after that ingestion piece where we bring your data onto Google Cloud, the next thing that we think about is how you harmonize the data from those different sources that you have so that it all speaks the same language. And the way that we think about that is from a historical data perspective and then incremental and streaming perspectives. Um, because when you think about bringing data onto cloud, usually you're starting with something that exists already, whether that's a pile of CSV files, whether that's an archival database that you already have, whether it's an existing CDW or an existing C data lake, or maybe an existing Clarity database, or et cetera. And so bringing that historical data in is very similar in a way to bringing in the incremental or the streaming data from the harmonization perspective, not from the ingestion perspective, but from the harmonization perspective. It's just there are some different formats as well. And I'm focusing in this picture here on data from electronic health records, but equally this could include DICOM data from imaging, uh, and it could include uh, VCF file data as well from genomics. Um, from an incremental data perspective, as well as those snapshot increments of CSV or pulling it directly from another database, more commonly with healthcare data, that incremental data is HL7 messages um, or fire messages uh, as well. And the transformations that we need to do are really in these four forms. The first is field mappings. So you've got maybe you know, five hospitals, let's say, maybe 105 hospitals on one side. And not every single one of them are using a different EMR, but I'll bet you many of them are using a different EMR instance, which is configured differently from the next EMR instance, and often they are using different EMRs. Even in very large health systems uh, of, say, you know, I've been talking to one recently that has more than 50 hospitals, um, they still have Epic, they have Meditech, they have all scripts, and those Epic instances are, there's a lot of them. <laughs> They're all differently configured. So as you bring in that data, what that means is that you've got lots of different schemas of source coming into the system. And so how do you want to align that data? Do you want to align it to fire? Do you have a schema in mind already that you want to align it to? Is it one of the sort of standard schemas? Unfortunately, there's a plethora of common data models, such as OMOP, which is commonly used within research organizations um, and uh, within pharma companies. CDISC, which you need from a pharma perspective for things like STDM, I2B2, or your own custom schema. So what we're trying to do from a harmonization perspective is understand these target schemas as first-class healthcare data citizens in the same way that we understand uh, FHIR and uh, HL7 and DICOM and VCF as first-class data transmission citizens. And if you don't want to use one of these first-class data citizens, you don't have to. Right? If you've got a schema that you're particularly keen on, that works too. But what's important is aligning the data from all your different sources into that single target. Uh, and how you do that is really with these four types of transformation. So first of all, the field mappings. Right? When I say PAT ID up here, and then I say PT underscore ID here, and then I say MRN over there, I need to know that that goes to patient underscore ID over here. That's very simplistic. The second area is around terminology mappings, because often <laughs> those same multiplicity of different sources also use different terminologies for the same concept. 
For example, this hospital uses RxNorm as its primary dimension table for medications, but this hospital over there uses FDB, and that one uses Multum. And so that's just an example on the medication side. When you think about extensions that groups have made, uh, whether that's regional extensions, whether that's versions of terminologies uh, that people are using for different purposes, uh, all of those terminology mappings need to happen as well. And so far, we're just talking about the structured data for data harmonization, but I'm going to come to the unstructured text in a moment. The third area of mapping transformation is units. Because when you're in a NICU and you're measuring the weight, the mass of a neonate, typically that's done in grams. But when you're measuring the weight of an adult, that's tip in, a, in a CV ICU, for example, that's typically done in pounds or kilos. And so making sure that that units alignment happens is really critical to being able to use the data uh, for analytics or machine learning. And it's not just weight, it's also all those labs as well. And then the fourth type, which is the type that I'm going to spend the rest of this talk focusing on, is clinical entity extraction. Understanding, extracting out those clinical concepts and the items uh, within the, their own ontologies into, stru into structured data and augmenting the structured data with those items. But there are different approaches for different use cases, and this is where NLP becomes really, really interesting, I think. So from a physician's perspective, what they want to do is have a system that plows through their clinical notes and extracts out all of those clinical entities that they were just busy dictating or busy typing into uh, their, their clinical note and have those added into the EMR as structured data, or at least have them added into uh, the, the clinical warehouse for analytics. But the rules that they use for determining what to extract and how to code those is very different, it really is, from the rules that a medical coder must follow in order for the hospital to be reimbursed or for the physician to be reimbursed. So if you look at the coder training, they don't go through X many years of medical school. Instead, they go through X many years or months of a HEMA training and then they're delivered with a book that's about that thick, that's the coding guidelines, updated every year, that lands on their desk. And those rules are different from what a physician thinks about in terms of the way that different diagnoses are defined, for example. So sepsis means one thing to a physician, and it means something entirely different to a medical coder. Not entirely different, but different enough. Those are different rules that they must follow. From a CDI perspective, a clinical documentation improvement specialist, their job is to, from an inpatient perspective, go through the documentation and look for opportunities where there is evidence, where there is clinical evidence that suggests a different diagnosis. So that's another way of, uh, another use case for this clinical entity extraction. And from the payer's perspective, they want to look at the clinical notes in order to identify any fraud or waste or abuse. And so, again, that's a different perspective. And, you know, as any of you who've been using machine learning know, there's a large difference between models that you create for compliance versus for discovery. So one size does not fit all in this case, and one NLP model does not fit all either because of this. So, maybe, there we go. I'm sorry if I was blinding somebody. Uh, let's talk then about our approach to natural language processing. And I want to say this is a preview of what we're uh, building here at Google. Um, but we're going to follow these five steps. So in order to extract that clinical information for a patient, we're starting off with named entity recognition. And named entity recognition means scanning all of that text, 
finding all of those clinical entities, finding all of the concepts. And this is a task that is very suitable for machine learning. All it requires is lots and lots of data, and data that is labeled, right? Lots of labeling as well, to identify not just where it found those clinical, con uh, not just the clinical concepts themselves, but also where it found them in the document, the positional information. That needs a lot of data, right? Because we have a lot of medical specialties. We have a huge amount now of ICD-10 codes, including procedure codes, uh, and a huge amount of things like LOINC codes as well, right? Which leads me on to my second piece. Ooh, where did that go? Ooh, come back. There we go. Sorry. Nope, let's go back one. My builds didn't work, did they? Uh, the second piece is uh, mapping those named entity recognitions into the ontology and then into the item classification um, for each of those medical concepts. So you need to decide when you're, when you're doing natural language processing and you're extracting out medications, what do you want to map to? Do you want to map to FDB because that's what you use within your health system? Do you want to map to Rx norm because that's typically what uh, everybody else is using around for analytics? Um, or do you want to use Multum because maybe you've got some medication, medication interaction checking system that's based on Multum? Um, so you need to understand, once you've identified which ontology you want to use, which concept each entity belongs to. And this is sometimes uh, more complicated than it sounds. And I'll give you an example. Uh, so when you say um, something like penicillin, that could mean a medication order, or it could mean a medication allergy. And so you need to start understanding the difference between those and choosing the right concept that the entity belongs to, uh, and then choosing the right item within that concept list. Again, extensive training data, but fundamentally a machine language, a machine learning language problem. OK, now let's try for number three. Ah, maybe. OK, th number three is the semantic model. It's all very well to be able to extract out those entities, map them to uh, what the ontology is and the terminology you want to use. But that's not enough, because what about when the physician says, rule out chest uh, pneumonia, rule out something else, some other diagnosis. Patient does not have blah de blah right? So negation. You need to start thinking about a semantic model that handles that negation, that handles what I always like to say, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, right? Could be doesn't mean the patient has it. Um, doing a differential diagnosis, understanding the typical language that's used for a differential diagnosis, understanding the difference between time, between patient had pneumonia three months ago, but that's since been resolved, versus patient has pneumonia. Understanding who has the entity. Patient's mother died of a heart attack. That, that, that heart attack doesn't accrue, doesn't, it doesn't get assigned to the patient. It gets assigned as a part of a family history. And that's sort of the simple types of semantic model. There are other more complicated types like things uh, like chest pain in the presence of something else might lead you to a different diagnosis. And so those are two different areas that need to be handled within uh, natural language processing and clinical entity extraction. Ah, oh, see, it's done it again. Ah, oh, I apologize. <laughs> number four, number four, uh, is the context of the patient. One note doesn't give you all the history of the patient, does it? And sometimes you need more information from the rest of the note in order to understand what to extract. And this is particularly common within the medical coding example. In medical coding, you want uh, all of the notes associated for that patient from this particular encounter. Um, and yet not all of the notes 
Uh, what you want to do, oh, come back. I do apologize. There we go. You also need to take in the context of the use case, because for medical coding, it's not all note types. It's only certain note types for this encounter. And so you need to really grok the context of that broader use case, understand what the guidelines are, and then make sure that that is appropriate, that you're building a, a flow that is appropriate for that. Um, and so any additional ontologies that you need to layer in, any sections of notes, parsing the notes to make the different sections, and then doing, of course, all the wiring up of getting the notes there in the first place. So when we think about natural language processing and clinical uh, entity extraction, these are the five areas that we're looking at. And what we're working on right now is the ability to provide an API that would uh, allow you to do the first portions of this. To us, named entity recognition is insufficient, right? That, that doesn't help you dramatically on its own. What you need to do is include the concept classification and the semantic model in order to have clinical entity extraction. And so now what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about a couple of other items, and then we're going to move to a demo. So the first piece is around tuning, <laughs> uh, because every, uh, every system, every health system, uh, has different unique documentation practices. And so in some cases, you know, they'll, they'll all go with a soap note. That's not very common that they'll all go with a soap note. But in other places, they'll have a particular structure that they want to use, and sometimes that differs, often that differs by specialty. Um, and also, often things like how they use abbreviations is very different, and is driven by uh, the health system as uh, some kind of overall guideline. There's often a unique use of terms. I remember uh, working with a system uh, that often used the abbreviation OB, uh, which uh, one NLP system took to mean obstetrics, uh, and actually they meant obesity. The patient had obesity. Um, and that, that we only discovered when we started looking really at the data quality issues. Um, there are often unique guidelines because, for example, some organizations will take a different approach to risk. And so that will tweak the model in terms of, particularly when you're looking at things from a compliance perspective. So let's uh, take a look uh, at the demo. Just before we switch there, I want to give you a brief introduction to the demo that we're going to show. So this is a preview. This isn't available today. Um, and what we're going to show you is how you can integrate, how you sh will be able to integrate, uh, your existing, any existing NLP solution you have with Google Cloud and extend it by leveraging Google Cloud's capabilities as well. And so fundamentally, what we're going to do is uh, show you a Jupyter notebook, which is a collaborative analytics notebook. Um, it's connected to BigQuery. And we're going to show you two different NLP models and how they can be integrated together. One NLP model that we're going to show is one that many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with, which is CTAKES. It's an open source NLP model. The other is one of our Google research models for NLP. Uh, it's a research model that is clinically based. Um, and the reason that I've got all of these items uh, differently colored is because you're going to start to see different concepts extracted by the different models. Um, so, for example, in the CTAKES model, uh, we have uh, using coding for that to SNOMED and medications to RxNorm. But the research model that we're going to use goes a lot deeper on the medication side, and it also identifies different types of PHI. So I won't remember these colors. You don't have to remember the colors either, but we'll point out some of the differences. So if we could switch to the demo, please. Great. So the first steps in here, uh, so this is a Jupyter notebook. Uh, the first steps that we're going to do are just to import all of the libraries in Python and start loading up all of the gubbins that we need in order to run 
an LP here. And that's done. And now we're going to, I'm reading from the screen here, load up the notes and the annotations from BigQuery, because in this case, we're using this directly on top of BigQuery. Uh, and the data that we're using here to train the model was from I2B2, which you can see in, in there. But the notes that we're testing this with are new notes that the model hasn't seen previously. Um, and so you can see here, we've loaded up a whole bunch of notes. And now what we're going to do is uh, look at uh, visualize the annotations. You can see we've loaded up 396 notes, I think, or concepts there. Um, so let's scroll down a bit so that we can see this. So we've got three different notes that we're going to show you here. The first is a discharge note. It's uh, you know, quite common for a discharge note to be like this sort of length. But you can see there's lots of different areas within that. Now, we're going to have to scroll up to see what the different models are finding from this note. So the first one that we're going to look at is C-takes. And uh, I'll remind you of the colors, because that one's easy for me to remember for C-takes. Uh, so the red things here are coded to SNOMED. And the green things here are coded to Rx norm. And the pure green thing, that Tamiflu, is a real Rx norm. The other sort of paler green things it, uh, means that it could be coded to either SNOMED or Rx norm. So in a system that you're building, you need to decide, right? You need to decide which one it would be for each one of those. And OK, it's found a whole bunch of things, but it's missed a whole bunch of things too, right? It's missed all of the information about the medications. It found the medication name, but it missed all of the information about them. So now let's switch to the research model, which we know, just because I gave you the prompt earlier with the color coding, we know that that's going to find a lot more medications. And it has. So what it's found is uh, blue is showing uh, the different medications. Green is showing information about the dosage. Uh, the reddish color uh, is showing uh, different information uh, about the roots, I think. Uh, and uh, you can see that there is a lot of different information. And Mrs. Smith has been identified because that's PHI. And we know that this research model is geared towards PHI and medication depth of information. So it's found a lot of different things, but it's not found everything that CTAKES found, because it's not geared towards finding all of the conditions or the procedures or the typical things that CTAKES is geared towards. So what we've been able to do is to merge those two together. And we haven't merged the model, but we're integrating the results of the two models. Um, and that Donnie's now displaying through uh, this both tab, this final tab up here. And so it's showing all of the different information that was found. And if you hover over any item, it'll tell you how it was coded. Uh, and so this is starts to show you the power of the kinds of things that we're building here for clinical entity extraction. That's great. Let's try it on another note. Let's try it on. Uh, and uh, actually, can we try it on the admissions note? So this is a completely different type of note, right? An admissions note is giving you a lot more information about the diagnostics from admitting, the past medical history, and so on. And so after the past medical history, uh, we've got a, a bunch of medication at home, allergies. We've got a physical exam. We've got the social history, and then the assessment and plan. OK, let's go run this through our different models and see what we find. So from a CTAKES perspective, again, we're finding a lot of the diagnoses or a lot of the conditions, um, things like nausea, vomiting, headache, uh, patient's confused, patient has chronic cough. Uh, she did attempt to eat a banana with a peel still on. Interesting. Uh, she is quite independent. She has a history of bipolar disorder. Um, and if we scroll down to the medications, please, Donny, uh, we should be able to see further down. There we go. 
we can start to see some of the medications that this poor patient is on as well. Uh, but it hasn't found all of them. Um, and it certainly hasn't identified again the, the dosage, the route of the medication, and whether it's active, and so on. Um, so now, let's apply our research model. This is the same research model that we've applied in the previous example. And actually, it's quite light at the top. If you scroll back up a little bit, it's quite light at the top because this one isn't trying to find all of those different conditions and procedures. It's focused on PHI, and it's focused on medications. So as we would expect, most of the highlights up there are around PHI. There's some purple up there, too, which relates to the time organization. Remember that I talked before about needing to understand tense, whether it's historic or what period of time something applies to. But as we scroll down to the medications, it's a bit like a rainbow, right? We found all of that different information about the different medications that this patient is on. And so that's really valuable. Now, if we merge the two together, then it allows us to see that combination and truly do that extraction of clinical entities that is a union of these different items with any coding from the first one going to SNOMED, any coding from the second model going to RxNorm, and all of that being integrated together. So why do I show you this? Because this shows you a pathway for how you can do clinical entity extraction on Google Cloud, even as we're still bringing on testing, building our NLP models to, to understand clinical language. Right? We have a, a great natural language API uh, out there, but it's not clinically focused. And so this starts to give you the idea that as we build our clinical NLP API, you can use it and also augment it with other, inf other types of models that you're doing. So let's take a look now at the different types of clinical concept that we found within a data set. And so Donnie's running some more Python code for me. Thank you. Uh, and if we scroll down, then we can see the different concepts that it, each of the different models has found. So uh, actually, let's look at CTAKES first, please. Thank you. So C takes, if you look at those items that it's found the most of within this documentation training set, as you would expect, most of them are related to diagnoses or procedures, related to parts of the body, right? Because that's what C takes is so good at. Some of them are medications, but most of them relate to conditions and procedures. Whereas if we look at the research model, uh, most of these items, well, you won't find specific PHI items because obviously you only find a few of those within each note, right? So unless we have all of our patients named Mrs. Smith, you're not going to see a large amount of PHI up there, but you do see a lot of different medications. Donnie, if you scroll down a bit more, please. This is a word cloud of what the two different models found. So again, on the CTAKES model, lots of different complaints, different procedures, different uh, diagnoses, definitely some uh, medications as well, because uh, CTAKES does find some aspects of medications. But compare that with the research one. And I love this research one, right? Pain. <laughs> Pain is the biggest item it finds. But you can see here, lots of different medications, right? Heparin, Percocet, Colace, Aspirin, Tablet, Coumadin. This one is much more focused, as you know, towards uh, finding the medications, but then also finding the amounts of the different medications and the roots of the different medications and the reasons for why they were prescribed. Finally, the last thing that we're going to do as part of this demo is find all of the notes that make a positive mention of a particular drug, in our case, vancomycin. And it found 44 of those. 
Uh, and the way it was doing that is using, uh, the, uh, I think, the C takes model. Um, and so this also gives you a way to start to look at your data and start to do some data quality on it as well. Um, OK, so if we could flip back, please, to the slides. And uh, I'll see if I can actually use this beastie. So the important thing to take away from this uh, presentation is that uh, you don't need to do everything at once. We'll meet you where you are. And that's true bringing structured data, bringing data across different modalities into Google Cloud for healthcare data, as well as for clinical entity extraction. We offer a framework in which to do this, in which to do the data ingestion with healthcare understanding data formats, uh, ingestion parts within our Cloud Healthcare API, understanding HL7, understanding Fire, understanding DICOM. We are building a framework for Cloud CDW where, again, you can use our data harmonization tools. If you have data harmonization tools that you already have built, you can use those. You can migrate slowly over time. You can do what you like uh, with that in regards to your own tools or other APIs that you've licensed versus using ours. And the same is true for clinical entity extraction, for natural language processing. You can bring your own model. You can use one of ours as we develop them and release them. Uh, or you can use a partner's model. So one of the things that we're looking uh, to extend Cloud Marketplace to uh, is to enable the uh, availability of partners' uh, clinical entity extraction models as well on there. Um, and so don't, don't wait. This was a preview. Um, but if you're using somebody's NLP models and you want to get started with that on cloud, you can do that. Uh, and over time, we'll be, uh, you, can, you can tell from this presentation, we're doing a lot of investment in this area right now. Uh, and so you can look to see our NLP models uh, become refined and more specific around uh, clinical data as well. So with that, thank you very much.